Greetings, Mandrake Road family. So uh, this is uh, going to be our new normal uh, for the foreseeable future. I've never had my sermons video recorded, uh, certainly not recorded them myself, and uh, certainly have never watched myself preach, because that's awkward enough. But uh, with everything that's going on with the coronavirus outbreak and the calls for isolation. Um, this means that I get to branch and we get to branch out in a, in a new way. And, and so with, uh, with this, uh, video calls and phone calls are great um, and we'll be utilizing those at various times, but for uh, a sermon or any sort of class, the um, it, it's just too cumbersome, and so I will be uh, recording my sermons for each Sunday and posting on YouTube for uh, for everyone to uh, to come and, and watch as uh, as they would like, and I will be posting some other things uh, starting next week, but uh, I'm not entirely sure what that's going to look like yet, um, but. This is our first. This is our first attempt at this, and so this is. Uh, it'll be a fluid situation, and um, we'll learn as we go. and And I hope that um, uh, we can we can journey along together in this. So I've been preaching from Isaiah forty to fifty five uh, for the last few months, and uh, I, I am even though I'm uh, sitting on my uh, Isaiah. Uh, sermon from a few weeks ago still that's still ready to go um, I'm I'm not going to be preaching from Isaiah uh, today uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at a different text in light of uh, all that has uh, occurred in the last few weeks and uh, the the rapid and drastic changes that have that have occurred uh, for people all across the country um, including us and so um, I'm gonna be looking at a text that I uh, have have gone to time and time again uh, throughout my my faith journey, and um, I come back to time and time again for a variety of reasons. But when things do get difficult, this is a text I do come back to, and so uh, I'm going to be taking a look at uh, Romans five one through five, and so I'm going to go ahead and read that. Therefore, since we are justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. And so... Uh, this text by itself, uh, if we just had these five verses separated, would, uh, would, would say a lot. Um, but they, they say even more in the context of Romans. And uh, while I'm not going to uh, unpack uh, all of Romans, given its great themes of faith and uh, the righteousness of God and what it means to be God's people, I, uh, I am... Uh, and that deserves a lot of attention and time that we simply don't have for this video. And so I do want to start with the, uh, the idea of faith. And um, so uh, the word faith is, uh, is, is a pretty robust word in general. And sometimes in English, it, it gets a little narrow and kind of pigeonholed into this idea of this this thing that I believe to be true. Um, so it's this intellectual uh, uh, process in which we we understand something to be true. You know, that uh, Jesus died and, and was resurrected, and um, so. Uh, or that God exists, you know, that's a big one when I was growing up and, and for many of you, I'm sure. And, um, but faith here actually has uh, a little bit different 
idea, I think. I think it's uh, something closer to the word trust. And so uh, as we look a little bit, uh, a little further back, uh, towards the end of chapter 4 in verse 20, uh, as Paul is talking about Abraham, and um, he, he says, No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, be, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. And so uh, that word there, distrust, is uh, apostia, and uh, that is uh, a word that would mean, could translate to unbelief. And, but that doesn't really fit the, the, the idea there. And so the word faith or belief or trust would be, uh, would be pistis. And so it's, it's so you, you put the A on the front of a word occasionally. So you think of words like typical and atypical or normal and, and abnormal. That adds a little bit more onto it. But uh, as, you, as you think through, uh, as we look at this and we, and we look at that, it's, it's trust is, is kind of what we're thinking about here is that in Abraham's life uh, demonstrated uh, that his faith was a, a matter of trust and he was asked to uh, to relocate across uh, the ancient Near East from Babylon to Canaan and because uh, God asked him to do so and uh, he trusted in God's promises and throughout time throughout many of those times he did uh, try to nudge God along or get God to to kind of do things a little quicker um, and he worried about those things and didn't demonstrate full trust until we get to the scene um, uh, on Mount Moriah where um, he is told to sacrifice Isaac and he is he is prepared to do so and uh, God intervenes and uh, Isaac is not sacrificed. And so it comes to radical trust there at the end of, of um, Abraham's story, near the end of Abraham's story. And so I think trust really fits quite well when we think about Abraham and when we think about uh, faith in general. And so it's, it's trust in um, the God who delivered Israel out of Egypt the God who brought them back from exile, and the God who sent his son to live and, and die and be raised. Um, and so I think trust really fits what we're seeing here, and, and we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll come back to that. But starting in verse, in verse 3, we have this. Uh, he begins with saying, And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us and so you know we have this this kind of this progression and, and it begins with suffering and we boast in our sufferings and it that's kind of a strange idea you know why would we boast in our sufferings and I don't think this is Paul saying let's uh, laugh or ignore suffering or belittle it or um marginalize it uh, I think Paul is saying to to recognize it uh, to face it to 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 recognize it's that it that it happens and it's a part of the world that we um, that that we live in and it's something that we see in other letters and he does a good job I think of, of doing that of, of recognizing and facing suffering and we see in second Corinthians he tells, he tells the Corinthians that while he was in Ephesus, that he um, that he experienced despair to the point of death, that he was crushed to the point of death, and so we see that as something that Paul and and the rest of the letter unpacks many of the things that he experienced, shipwrecks, um, and other other things that would fall under the category of suffering especially for uh, a person in the first century. And so, um, so I think it's this, the idea here is that suffering is, is something that we, we, we 
don't seek it out or we don't attempt to create our own suffering or suffering for someone else, obviously, but a something where we recognize it and we, we, we do call it what it is. And so, but as we move from suffering, uh, on from suffering to uh, what he calls endurance, and when I think about the word endurance, I think about uh, sports or athletics, and I think about I think about running. Okay, um, I don't do running. I usually do think about it um, because running is truly suffering. But um, you know, the more you run, the the easier it is for you to run. Uh, so if you run a mile, the more you do that, the 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 easier that will become. The more often you do it, the more it becomes a habit, and you'll be able to run, run longer distances, and that'll become easier over time the more you do it. And and so when we think about something like lifting weights, okay, so when you lift uh, when you lift weights or you you do something that creates resistance, your muscles actually experience pain and they break down, and then they repair themselves and they become uh, stronger, uh, more sturdy, uh, even bigger. And so I think that's what we're seeing here is that suffering produces, uh, produces endurance. And, and so we, as we think about, so, so what, what would be our example? What would we be, we be exercising? And so that comes into now what we think about as, uh, endurance, uh, producing character. So what, uh, what kind of character would we like to produce? And I think this comes back to uh, the cross, so the self-sacrificial nature of the cross and uh, what it means to love our neighbor. And so uh, to love God and love neighbor, and, and I really want to hone in on loving our neighbor uh, for today because uh, that's, that's where we are right now as a people. Um, the suffering is that we are in the midst of very unprecedented, uncertain, and uh, and terrifying times for many people. And so, uh, many people, uh, all of us, mo most likely, have had to shift our lives drastically in some way. And uh, as to some some, and sometimes we ask why, and we we. We wonder about the severity of it, and um, there are a lot of things being said about it. But th the fact is, is the the coronavirus uh, pandemic has uh, drastically altered our our world um, and life here in our country and in Madison and at Mandrake, as uh, it, it it threatens our health, um, it threatens our economy, as people are losing jobs. And or 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 the that the threat of losing a job is is um, is ever present, and uh, it it has created a situation where I'm now rec recording my sermons, um, but uh, and as we have not met uh, for the last time I saw anyone from Mandrake was uh, about ten days ago. Uh, physically, I've. Video chatted with some folks, had some phone calls, and uh, Katie's done the same. But it, it's been um, it's been difficult. And as introverted as I am, there's a point where uh, where being cooped up or isolated is uh, is difficult, and it's it is unhealthy. We are social creatures, and but at the same time, this gives us a chance to adapt, to think about what it looks like to to exercise what it looks like to love our neighbor and what it looks like to uh, exhibit uh, the self-sacrificial love that Jesus demonstrates on the cross. And so uh, I think at this point, and as we think about the world that, that is now before us for the foreseeable future, that we, that these are, as we would call the worst of times and these are the times that uh, character is revealed, and not just uh, not just any character, but most people's uh, true character, and 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 so that comes out in many ways. Um, people uh, 
uh, we think about uh, as things like this happen, um, some phrases come to mind is um, um, instincts, uh, fight or flight, um, uh, survival, right? And so we, those instincts start to kick in and we respond with those, uh, and sometimes those are small things that happen and sometimes in these situations, um, all the things we know about ourselves can can disappear in an instant, uh, and uh, and we're left with these instincts and what we're trying to what what we feel like we need to accomplish. And uh, and for us as as God's people, uh, character and the exercising is to that we're trying to exercise um, the cross to demonstrate that self sacrificial love and to love our neighbor even though. Uh, we do find ourselves in the worst of times. And, and so uh, doing this kind of work and um, doing this type of exercise is something that, uh, so when the world returns to its new normal, but more of a sense of normalcy, and people are again driving, driving about or visiting the grocery store or going to go into the emergency room or a hospital, or just the doctor's office, uh, I, uh, help us to demonstrate those more more readily um, uh, in a way that, that it's been tested and the endurance that we have built has been in, in such a difficult time that these regular, um, these regular encounters that we do have, uh, everyday life is where, where we will see the fruit of that. And, and so it's just like in sports, when, when your, uh, the types of things that you've prepared for, um, when things start to go poorly, that can you respond and, 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 and do better and, or, or, and continue to do the things you practice and do them in a way that can can um, either bring you to victory or, or that you that you just continue to do the things that um, you've practiced and the things that you've built your your team or yourself to do in those uh, in those moments. And so it's the same thing as as being God's people is that we don't stop being God's people uh, during pandemics or stock market crashes or other, other sorts of uh, catastrophes. And so as we, as we ponder this text and as we ponder um, what it means to be God's people in the midst of, of uncertainty, in the midst of uh, bare shelves at grocery stores, which many of us have never witnessed, uh, especially not to this extent, um, where we see um, people who are trying their best to do their jobs, uh, grocery store workers, uh, restaurant workers, healthcare professionals, uh, that they're trying their best and they're working as hard as they can. And um, in our, uh, in, in our, uh, in our, the midst of our own anxieties and uh, concerns about what's going on that we, um, we may treat them poorly and or that we may panic and and not leave enough for the next person and so I think this is where having the cross in front of us as we do uh, as we do these things as we as we continue as we continue to learn just what our what our what our world is going to look like, our local world here in Madison, and as a part of Mandrake Road, and as God's people, what is this going to look like, and what what does it mean to love your neighbor and to always demonstrate the cross in these situations? And so, um, grace is going to be incredibly important, and patience and understanding, and which will be in very short supply. And so as we continue to navigate uh, the situation, it's a time to exercise 
uh, the cross, to exercise what it means to live self-sacrificially. Um, it's a time to build those muscles. It's a time to build that endurance. So when the world does, when, when our worlds do return to some form of, of, of what they used to look like, um, we can continue to practice that as God's people when things are better. And so uh, that's what I want us to think about. And, and when I come to this text, those are the things I see, because as we come to the idea of hope, it's that we do what we do because of who God is. And we do those things in the midst, we do those things regardless of what is going on in the world and regardless of how good or bad things are, that our hope is in the creator of the universe and that our, uh, our trust is in his promises. And so that our lives would reflect and would uh, would reflect the glory that we will have a share in and that our lives would re reflect Jesus's own life uh, that we see the cross and that our hands and feet would be an extension of, of Jesus's hands and feet as we navigate a very difficult and uh, a very trying time and that we remember that that uh, we are called in all times, in, in times of suffering, in um, times of prosperity, um, and in everyday life that uh, as, we, as we navigate um, the, the, the world that is before us, that we always uh, love God and we always love our neighbor, and that is demonstrated most fully in the cross, that when people, when, when people, God's own people were at their most unlovable, and when God's creation was at its most unlovable, Jesus demonstrated truly what love is and what it looks like on the cross. And so as people, and as ourselves, also become unlovable during these trying times, as anger and bitterness and cynicism set in, that we can always have the cross in front of us and looking to practice, to exercise, how do we self-sacrificially love our neighbor during this time? That is the kind of endurance we're, build, we're building, the, the kind of character we wanna demonstrate on a daily basis. And, and in these times, it's the hardest. And so, I want to end with a prayer and uh, thank you for joining us. And if you're not from Mandrake, thank you for, for, for coming by. And, and I hope that you are blessed by this. And, um, but let's go ahead and close in a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for um, the opportunity to continue to meet in, uh, in albeit diminished capacities, but that we can still see each other, that we can still hear each other's voices. I pray, Lord, that as we weather the storm of this uh, current, um, uh, current situation involving the coronavirus, um, I pray that you would uh, help us to always have Jesus in the front of our minds, and that is that his life, death, and resurrection are things that we demonstrate in all things that we do. I pray, Lord, that we would demonstrate his love and his mercy and his sacrifice in everyone we encounter during this time and beyond. We thank you for your son and pray that we'd live as he lived and love as he loved. Amen.